My name is Jean Bismuth. Um, I'm a vascular surgeon and chief of vascular surgery at Tampa General Hospital, University of South Florida in Tampa. So acute limb ischemia is essentially a thrombotic event um, that threatens a limb. Now, usually there's something underlying that's caused it, uh, but sometimes it can be something that embolizes from the heart, from the aorta, something up north from its trajectory. How you treat it uh, is really dependent on how they present. Sometimes they present, they're quite asymptomatic, and you can put them on a, a blood thinner and keep them on and treat them electively. And sometimes they are more advanced, uh, for example, a Rutherford 2B, and then they really need to be treated fairly acutely um, because then their limb is threatened and, and they're at risk of losing their leg. And so those we like to intervene on quickly. And the reality is we always think that making an incision, going in or removing the clot manually is actually faster. It actually is not, right? We know that already, that getting a catheter up and over, uh, a thrombectomy catheter, and performing thrombectomy percutaneously is much faster. Um, and it also gives you the opportunity to treat the lesion, the underlying lesion that ultimately uh, triggered the thrombosis. Vascular surgery in general, uh, I would say it's a space in, tra in transition, right? So um, if I were to take a board exam today, still the question or the answer to the question would be that you do an open thrombectomy with standard uh, Fogarty balloons, which still works. But the reality is you have to remember how old our patients are. The median age of our patients is somewhere in the 60s to 80 range. And so, you know, they fail and have a lot of other issues. Um, so being able to minimize the insult to the patient is always an advantage. And that's something we always have to keep in mind. So uh, I think the guidelines obviously structure a lot of what we do. Um, but the reality is we know that the tools today are not in the guidelines because guidelines were written before those tools existed. Um, in my opinion, a lot of those guidelines need to be rewritten. Our care, I think, is much better delivered today uh, and safer. Uh, and I think if you look at the stride data, um, that is actually uh, kind of underlines that whole notion uh, in that we get better limb salvage rates and the patients actually overall do better. Some of the challenges that you encounter are at the basis is what is the, what is the patient's status? Again, our patients are generally some of the sicker patients in the hospitals. And so um, considering whether you can actually treat these patients without any general anesthesia, obviously if you're making an incision, they're getting general anesthesia most commonly. Um, and so being able to do percutaneously, a patient stays awake, they're overall doing better, um, you can go in, you treat your patient. Uh, those are, I think, important considerations when we look at the therapies that are, we're able to deliver. Um, it's no different than if we use thrombolytics. Obviously, that's also percutaneous, but you have the risk of bleeding that's more significant. Um, and you have the, the need to come back to the operating room and, uh, and re-intervene a second time, um, sometimes even a third time. But at the very least, you're not doing a single setting this is a space in evolution. I think there are a lot of, um, a lot of different companies that are uh, either on the market or coming on the market. And there's great competition for this area because there's great benefit to the patient. So we know that the market's going to be huge um, and it's going to continue to evolve. Computer-assisted uh, vacuum thrombectomy is essentially uh, the acronym for Penumbra. And what that means is you have a computer algorithm that actually uh, detects clots. Um, and so what it does is it gives us auditory and visual cues that allow us to respond to the treatment that we're delivering. Today, what we have on the market is a game changer. So we started um, uh, with some smaller catheters. Uh, then we went to Lightning 7, gave us a little bit better aspiration technology. Uh, finally going to Bolt, which is uh, really a game changer because um, really in shorter period of time, we can aspirate the same amount of clot. Um, and again, get the legs reperfused faster, uh, always a benefit. The longer patients are ischemic, the worse off they do generally. When I started um, using aspiration uh, primarily for ALI, um, uh, we had Lightning 7, which was uh, actually already a good tool. Um, the biggest difference between Lightning 7 and Bolt is uh, Bolt has the ability to modulate pressure, whereas Lightning is just continuous aspiration. Um, and although Lightning was already a great tool, um, Bolt has actually changed our ability to not only uh, 
how much uh, clot we were able to remove, but the speed at which we were able to remove it. Um, and that really is, is an important feature in terms of our ability to revascularize the limb as quickly as possible. The stride data is important data, but really what we need is more data. Um, and the data not so much to say that it's one is better than the other, which I already think it is, um, but it's important for us to be able to change the guidelines. Uh, and before you change the guidelines, it doesn't become a standard, and you want it to become a standard. Um, and that's an important element. Uh, as clinicians, I think we uh, globally know that aspiration works. Uh, we also know that patients overall do better, um, but it's important to put pen to paper and actually publish that. Uh, and until we do that, it doesn't become the standard of care. So in the context of do we stay with the old or do we move on to a better therapy, I think the answer is clear. We move on to a better therapy. Um, there is no way that we can justify uh, continuing unless there are, there are reasons not to, but I think new data uh, and broaden the spectrum of the data is going to help us uh, underline the data from stride uh, and give us the ability to actually change the algorithms and the guidelines.